Hey everyone, it's Meg, and did you know that I love building trees? You may or may not have known that. I have been making mega trees for quite a while now, and the more I make them, the better my technique and process becomes. The types of trees I used to make, I can now make in a fraction of the time and make them much better. This tutorial is to share with you my current process for making mega trees, and I hope it will be a help to you. I will be running through different tools, plugins, and commands that I'm using to make these trees. However, I will expect you to take what I'm teaching you and apply it to whatever type of tree you want to make. Some of the main plugins and mods I will be using for this include World Edit, a basic necessity, Fast Async World Edit, Archeon, Go Paint, and the Schematic Brush Reborn plugin. Those are the basic plugins I'll be using. If I do end up using something different, I'll let you know, but for sure I will be using all of those. First, I'm going to talk about my process of building trees over time and how this birch trees process differs from these newer trees process. The process is slightly different for both, but the main tool I'm using is the schematic brush. On these particular trees, I built the trunks and the branches all individually on this. So all of these black, or what is this, this dark oak, whatever branches, all of those were built individually with the Archeon Spike command or World Edit Curve command. And then I made schematics of just these few leaves here and pasted them all over the branches. It was successful, but it did take a long time to do. This tree still looks nice and this method works, but it does take a little bit longer to do it this way by just pasting the leaves on. That is why with these newer trees, I decided to try making schematics of an entire branch instead of just the leaves, thereby negating the need to build each branch individually as well. I have branches built in all shapes, sizes, and orientations so that when I do paste them onto the tree, it will fill it out nicely and make the correct shape of a tree that I'm going for. Once you have the assets built, you could make an unlimited number of variations of a tree with those assets. It's a lot faster too than the first trees method where I had to paste each cluster of a leaf, not to mention I had to make the whole tree model from scratch if I wanted to make variations. One of these days I'll have to do another birch tree using my newer method, but I just wanted to show you my method's progression. One obviously takes longer than the other, but they're both still doable. I may very well be discovering new methods in the future. Currently, this is what I do. Now let's get into the actual tutorial, shall we? Step one, we're going to build the trunks, and the method I'm about to show you works best on trunks that are straighter up. You could try it slightly angled, but if it curves too much, this method might not work. So first, I'm going to use the convex selection. We need that in order to use the spike tool. So I'm just going to select down there, point number one, and I'm flying straight up. I am moving around a little bit, so it's not perfectly straight. As tall as I want this to go, I know I have a little bit of a curve in there. I'm not too worried about it. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to G-mask air here. Then I'm going to use the Archeon spike tool and do spike. Um, some kind of placeholder block. I'm going to use emerald and then we're going to pick the starting radius and the end radius. Let's try 16 and 4 and see how that looks. Okay, it's actually not too far off from what I have over here. I don't love the straightness of this or the curviness of it, so I might reselect it and try again real quick. By the way, in case you were wondering, I am using the command macros mod to make these selection points and do other actions really quickly. I can set my own macros to whatever commands I want with this mod, and it has saved me so much time from having to type out every single command in the chat box, so if you want to look into it, it's a great help. Let's try the same one again, maybe a little bit narrower at the top, and we'll get something like that. I can work with that, it's good enough. Then we can deselect that convex selection. When I'm really picky with my trees, I'll go in here and adjust the shape of this as I see fit. If it's got something weird like this, like a strange bump that doesn't need to be there, or a strange hole that doesn't need to be there, I just kind of clean up some of the weirdest edges. Or if it's got too square of an edge, depending on the size of the tree, this for example looks horrible. Let's get rid of that. If it's got an edge like over here where it looks like a box, I might cut into that corner. 
Most likely no one is even going to see this, but I'm just extra picky. You do whatever you want. It will add to the build time if you do decide to do this. I just like to clean up some of these edges if they're too square or not shaped properly. Commands are not always perfect when it comes to shaping. I didn't go over the whole thing, but that's the general idea. Next, I'm going to grab the cuboid selection. So just do slash slash cuboid or select cuboid. And I'm going to select this entire thing again, but I'm going to hide that selection. It's still there. And the next tool I need is the feather. The feather is for go paint. And with the feather, I'm going to show you how I make this bark like texture over here. It's a combination of using go paint and world edit. So if you left click with the feather, you've got your go paint menu. First, you're going to enable it. Then I'm going to select another placeholder block to go on top of the emerald. So emerald is my mask and I'm using lapis as my other placeholder. And then I'm going to select the spray brush and I don't want this to place very often. So I might lower the place chance percent a bit. I might increase the brush size. And then the other thing I want to do is enable surface mode just because I only want this to be painting on the outside of the emerald, not on the inside blocks. It makes the processes later on easier if I enable that. Make sure you have your G mask turned off if it's on still, and then you can paint on here. I think those are a little too close together, so I'm going to adjust my brush a bit. I'm going to make it less place chance and bigger. And then I'm just going to randomly paint this around. I'm trying not to be picky with a step, but it's also hard not to be picky at times. The goal here is to have them spread out evenly, not too many clustered together, and it will all make sense in a little bit what's going to happen here, but try to make sure they're not too close to each other. And if you need to adjust the size and get these little spots, you can. Maybe that would be easier, actually. I don't know. It probably doesn't matter as much the closer you get to the top, but you do want to cover as many of these blank spaces as you can because everywhere you put these dots, you're creating a place that will carve into the trunk, more or less. You can always go back and adjust some things later or go in now and kind of change some things up if you think they're too close to each other. But I think this is fairly decent for now. I just see some that I know will be a problem, so I'm removing some of these, like this right here, that's too many clustered together. You get the general idea, you make a spotted tree like this, and we still have this selected. So now using world edit, what I'm going to do is G mask the emerald. So whatever the first placeholder block was, we're gonna G mask that. And then we're going to replace below the lapis with a lapis block. And then it's going to stretch those blocks down, as you can see. And here's where you really start to see where the blank spots are and where everything starts to clutter together. So I'm going to undo that and add one here. Maybe also remove some of these. There's just too many clustered in this one spot. Let's try that again. Replace below lapis with lapis. And then you can do this several times. So just run that same command, I don't know, four or five times till you get some streaks in your emerald like this. And it's already starting to look like a bark texture, which is really cool. And if you see any odd blocks that you think should be filled in or not, you know, you can clean it up if you want. But it also does look more natural to have it very randomized like this. Now that we have that, we can texture it. And here is the block palette that I'm using. That's the same one that I used for these trees over here. So the plan is to use these two lighter blocks for where the lapis is and these two darker blocks for where the emerald is and then this is going to go around wherever the lapis is first let me show you how to do the walls currently our g mask is set to emerald but we're going to have to change that so we want to g mask around emerald blocks and then we want to do an ampersand for and on emerald this way it won't be placing any blocks on air so we'll only be replacing the emerald blocks next to a lapis block so go ahead and enter that g mask then you can simply replace with the nether brick wall i use the nether brick wall just because it's the closest wall to a dark brown we have you could use blackstone blackstone is a bit too dark 
and the mud brick is a bit too light, but it really depends on what color palette you end up wanting to use. I thought that this one looked the best because it was slightly dark, but also not black. You should get something like this. And you can see how it worked just as intended, where it only replaced the emerald blocks that were directly next to lapis blocks. Perfect. Now we can get rid of the G mask, and there's also a command in Archeon to fix connections. So all of these walls are not connected properly, so we can go ahead and run that. You do have to make sure your G mask is off for that to work. But now it looks something like this. And you can see right down here, I don't love this because there's hardly any green, hardly any emerald in this. I'm going to backtrack a few steps and then bring it back to this step in the process. The more I look at this, the more I realize it's going to be imperfect no matter what. So let's just move on. Next, I'm simply going to be replacing the lapis and emerald with these other blocks. And I like to use some kind of noise pattern for this just to make it even more randomized and nicer looking. Make sure your G mask is off, just double checking that it is. And then we can replace the lapis with, let's do a purlin texture. And we'll make this a size of four. I don't remember which size does what, but we'll have the size there. And then we'll have our two block types. So we have oak wood and stripped spruce wood. And then we can do that. And you'll see we'll place it in there randomly using that purlin noise pattern. Looks nice. And then we'll do the same thing for this, which is mangrove wood and stripped dark oak. So we'll just replace this first number with the emerald, which is 133. I like using the numbers just because it's faster for me because I have some of them memorized, not all of them. And then we'll have mangrove wood and stripped dark oak. There we go. It's done. I think it looks good. Not sure if I like the twisting of this trunk as much, but that's kind of a minor thing. I'm sure trees can grow with a little bit of a twist. Let's get rid of these. Now that you have your trunk, I'll show you how to make all of the branch assets over here and turn these into schematics so that we can paste them directly onto the branch all at once. For sake of example, I'm just going to add one extra asset to these ones over here so I can show you how I did them. And then we can use these existing assets of these pine branches and paste it onto that tree over there. The first thing I did for these pine branches was to make these little needle assets because I was experimenting with including details such as candles and ferns and some finer detail. And you'll see I even textured them so it's darker in the center and it gets lighter toward the tip. It was much easier for me to make little assets of the leaves of this. However, you'll see over here for these ones, I did not do that. These ones were a little bit more procedural with world edit or placing around blocks and above blocks. But for this one, it worked out well. And then for this one, this method worked out well. So it really depends on what type of leaf you're making. If you're making something more like the birch tree over here that has a specific leaf shape, you'll probably want to make the leaf as a separate asset first, and then you can make your own branch assets off of that. So it really depends on the tree you're doing and how much detail you want it to include in the leaves. I already made schematics for all of these already, but I'll quickly run through how to save a schematic and how to apply it to a brush. First, we need to select it. And then you're going to copy it from wherever you want it to be pasted from. Imagine if I were to click somewhere, I want where I'm clicking to be the place where I'm copying from. So for these, I like it to be in the center, and that's where I'll copy from. With it copied, let's type out skem save and put the name you want it to be. I called these pine needles, and to make this be placed inside of a folder, I'm going to do underscore and then the number of the asset it is. That way, when we load this into a brush, instead of putting a number on the end, we can use an asterisk and it will pull everything from that pine needle folder. So if you want to do that, make sure you're using that underscore in the middle. I'm not going to save this one because I already have it saved. I already have all of these saved as schematics, but once you have everything saved, then you can bind it to a brush. To make a brush, first you'll need a weapon or a tool, then type slash SBR for schematic brush in the chat. 
And when you do this, a menu will pop up in the chat. And this is a newer way of using Schematic Brush. It has a whole menu built into the chat that you can click around. Let's run through this real quick. Also, fair warning, I'm not going to show you every single feature to this plugin. There are some more comprehensive tutorials out there. I know Pluto has one. I could link to it down below if you are interested in learning every single thing. I'm going to cover most of the basics and give you enough of a grasp on it so that you can use it to build mega trees. But there's always more about it that you can learn. Once you have all of your schematics saved, and you load in this brush editor thing. You wanna go up here where it says schematic sets and click the change button. We need to load in our schematics so that we can apply it to this brush. And then over here, I'm going to add a schematic set by clicking the add button. And then I'll click name to add by name. Then start typing in your folder name. And once you type that all in, Instead of putting the number on the end, make sure you change that to an asterisk. And that will load everything in that folder. And now you can see on the left how it's loaded all five of those schematics. Then you have these modifiers down here where you can automatically flip, rotate, or set an offset to the schematic set. This is a bit interesting because these modifiers are only affecting the schematic set, but there's also another modifier set for the brush in the main brush menu. It's up to you if you want to apply these modifiers to the schematic set itself or if you want to apply it to the schematic brush. I guess it really depends on how you want to save presets because you can save presets of the schematic sets and you can save presets of brushes. Aside from that, there really is no difference where you do it. For now, I'm going to leave this alone here and click the back button. Now we're back in the schematic set menu. You could add more schematics into this. It doesn't have to be just one folder. You could have as many as you want in here, but I only need this one, so I'm going to click back. Now we're back to the main menu and you can see it says which schematics you have loaded in. That's correct. And the next option down is placement where you can choose how these schematics will be placed when you click. I like to use the original option because it will paste based on where you copied it. And to me, that's just the easiest thing to use. But there are other options too and you can experiment with them and see which one works best for you. Include air by default is false, so it will not include air blocks. You probably don't ever want to change that, but you could if you wanted to. And then replace all set to false. This is basically saying that it's G-masking air and not replacing over other blocks, which is what we want. I don't want to change that. And below that is the other option for modifiers. This is the one that will be applied to the brush itself. And I do want to change this option here. Let's click on flip and then up here you'll see you have other options. We're going to click on random. So it will randomly flip our schematic and then we'll click rotation and click random. So now it will automatically flip and rotate for us. And there is one extra modifier here as opposed to in within the schematic set to filter certain blocks from the schematics, which is pretty cool. So I guess that is one other difference between these modifiers and then the schematic modifiers. But I think I have all of these settings now as I need them to be for my brush. Now for all of this to actually be bound to your tool, you have to click this bind button over here. So let's click on that. And it pops up a little confirmation saying that this many schematics were loaded onto this brush. There is a visualizer you can turn on and off. And as you can see here, we know it was successfully bound to the brush because the visualizer is on by default. I'll share some more tips about schematic brush later, but I did want to say here that anytime you make any changes inside of this menu, you do have to click the bind button again to rebind it to your brush. Otherwise the changes won't apply. Also, I touched on it earlier, but you can save a brush preset or a schematic preset and load it in in the future if you didn't want to have to go through all the work of setting it up each time. All right, I have a brush made, but I'm not quite ready to use it. First, I'm going to show you how I make one of my branch assets. I have to prepare the branch first before I can use this, but we have it ready to go for when we need it. I'm going to make one extra of these pine branches just to show you the process I use to make them. First, go ahead and get the convex selection from World Edit. I'm using a shortcut, but usually it's slash cell convex. And I need to think about what orientation and length I'm going to make this branch. I'm going to look around and see. I pretty much have all of the orientations already, but I'll just pick another random one to do. I just want to make sure whatever I'm doing, it's a little bit different from the ones I currently have. So I might make one that goes more downward. How about that? So we'll start by making our points and we'll just make a few of these. 
And once I have those, I'm going to enter the spike command from Archeon and I'm going to use a placeholder block. How about to diamond, which is 57. And we just want this to be a very small spike. So we'll try three and one and it could probably go a little bit longer. In fact, we could probably add some noise to this. So let's do the minus N flag. I'll keep entering that until I get one I like. This one's good. Then we're gonna add some more curves onto this, this time using the curve command from world edit. And that's just gonna be curve and a block and zero for the width or the size. And I use this for all the little twigs that stick off of the main branch. And I'm just gonna keep adding them till I get a shape that I like. This is the process I'm using for these branches, but really it depends on what type of tree you're making and how you want it to look. I'm just copying the same method that I use for those other branches though. I also have these little twigs coming off of my other branches and I think I added all of those by hand. They're not too hard to do when you only have a few of them per branch. So I do go in here and clean up some areas by hand and add those little twigs or areas for them. It might also be nice to mix in some branches that have more bare branches and not leaves attached to them. I didn't really do that for this tree, but it is another option to consider and it would probably look more realistic if you did. I'm going to paste the leaves on this before texturing it. It doesn't really matter which order you do it, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it that way. I've got my brush ready. All I have to do is right click to paste things in. And it's going to randomly rotate through all of the schematics that are loaded in. And I'm just going to paste them all around. There are some other things you can do with schematic brush that I'll show you in a little bit once we paste the branches onto the trunk because I, I think it's just better to show it with the full branch instead of with these little schematics. But for example, one thing you can do if you really want to is you can turn on and off the visualizer. I really like having it on, but it is an option to turn it off if you wanted to. Little things like that. There's so many options and ways you can customize this plugin to make it easier for you. I honestly don't need that many leaf assets on this. I'm just pasting a few in, but we probably do need one that could go right here. I'll share some more tips on how to use schematic brush in just a moment. I'm actually doing some things I haven't shared with you yet, but be patient. I will in a little bit. All right. So once you have some leaves pasted in, that doesn't look like a whole lot, but I think it suits this branch to have a little bit less. Next, we can texture the branch. I'm just going to be painting over this with Go Paint, but all the finer twigs that are made out of fences or slabs, I'm doing those by hand because there's so few of them that it honestly doesn't take that long. In fact, I didn't really use that many stairs and slabs at all on these branches to smooth it out, but that is another option if you wanted to do that. I'm just adding some fences in and then I'm going to paint over the whole thing with Go Paint. First, I'm painting all of the diamond blocks as mangrove, and then I'm going to select a lighter block like oak wood and put that on the tips. Then I will use a darker block like spruce wood to paint some shadows in some spots. Again, I'm not over detailing these branches, but you could add extra detail here and it wouldn't take too much extra time. And that's the nice thing about doing this method entirely is you can take the time to put as much detail as you want into a single asset. And then you can reuse that asset as much as you want without having to add detail each time. It's great. Once you have several of these built out, remember you'll want to make them in a variety of sizes and shapes. Also, it's very important that you consider the crown of the tree and whether or not you need some vertical facing branches. You have to consider every possible angle. You could even take, for example, this one branch we just made, make a copy of it, then rotate it up so it becomes a vertical version of the same branch. That's another way of getting more branches out of these. I don't do this very often though because I do like making unique branches for everything. It's still an option, maybe just don't overuse it. Now we have one new horizontal branch and the same branch in a vertical orientation that we could use for the top of the tree if needed. Now I'm going to make these branches into schematics. I hope I'm selecting the right branch and not going into the other one. It's a bit close with these candles on the sides. All right, so for these branches, when I copy them, I like to copy it from the end because I'm thinking about where it will be pasting from and I'll want to paste it directly onto the trunk. So I'll copy it from here. And I don't remember how many schematics I have, so let me check real quick. Schematic list. Okay, I have 12 pine branches, so this will need to be pine branch 13. 
So we'll do schematic save, pine branch, 13. And then we'll select this other one that I did. And this one's a bit tricky to figure out where to copy it from because of the orientation of it. But I guess the best I can do is just stand next to this and copy from here. And this one will be branch 14. If you for any reason find a mistake in a schematic and need to resave it, you can overwrite an existing schematic by using the minus F flag on the end. It will prompt you to do this in the chat, but I thought I'd mention it just in case you missed it. Now we can do the fun part where we paste all of the branches onto the trunk. I have another tool, I probably didn't need one, but I got another one to use for this. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with the pine needles. We'll do slash SBR, and we need to bind our pine branch assets to this brush. Schematic sets, change, add, name, search for pine branch. And then I'm going to do all of them with the asterisk. And then go back, back. We want to place in the original place. We um, want to change the flip to random and the rotation to random. And that is it. Then we can bind the brush. So it's got 14 schematics in one set. There's a few more things about schematic brush I need to go over. Right now you see how this is visualizing perfectly the next schematic. However, the visualizer doesn't work if it exceeds a certain block amount within your schematic. For example, a lot of these bigger branches over here, I cannot visualize them with the brush because they're just too many blocks. Which for me is okay. To me, the visualizer is a bonus because before when I used it, I never had such a thing. Where if it did exist, I never used it. I just know that when one comes up that can't be visualized, at that point you just have to guess and keep trying until you get a placement that you like. But it's really not that big of a deal. You can start right clicking to paste these branches on. And when the visualizer does work, I go wherever the branch seems to fit the best, putting larger ones toward the bottom and smaller ones towards the top. But that also depends on what type of tree you're making. If you're stuck on one schematic, but you don't really know a good spot for it, you can skip to the next one by pushing F on your keyboard. And here we've hit one of the schematics that can't be visualized because it's just too big. However, I do know it needs to go towards the bottom of this tree because it is a bigger branch because it has more blocks in it. So I'm going to make sure to paste it somewhere lower and hope for the best. And looks like we have another one that we can't see. So let's take another guess. All right, now I've got some smaller ones again that we can visualize. Just know if you do get a bigger branch that you can't visualize, most likely it's going to go towards the bottom of the tree. But it also depends on what type of tree you're making. Hitting F will go to the next schematic in the schematic list. You can also rotate the schematic by 90 degrees by left clicking. And to flip a schematic, it's shift, left click. And you might also have to hold spacebar if you are flying so that you don't fall while using it. So again, shift click to flip, click to rotate, and right click to paste. Oh, and then of course you can skip through them. I don't know the hotkey for it, maybe someone can tell me, but you can go to the previous schematic by doing slash SBRM previous. You can also go to next and do this other one called selection, which I don't know what that one does, but again, this is not a comprehensive tutorial, I'm just covering what I do know. But if there is a hotkey to go to previous, maybe someone can let me know what that is. I only know the one that goes forward. There are a few other things I want to show you about Schematic Brush before I finish this tree. One of those being how to disable and enable the visualizer. I don't know why you would want to do that, but just in case you wanted to, the command is slash SBRS. I think of that as being Schematic Brush Settings. I don't know if that's what it stands for, but that's how I think of it. Then do Preview, Enable, false. It's a bit tricky because you'd expect it to be disable for turning it off, but it's actually enable false to turn it off. It's worded a bit funny. And then enable true would be turning it on. But if I turn that off, we can see the visualizer has naturally turned off. Surprising. And now we can enable it again. Just in case you ever wanted to know how to do it, there is a command to do that. There's also this feature to show names, and when you have this enabled to true, you can tell it where you want it to appear, but what it does is it will display on your screen which schematic you just pasted, which could be helpful if you needed to go back to fix a specific schematic for any reason. 
So the different options for where it will show up, you have the chat option, which will appear directly in the chat box. That's probably the best option just because it will stay up forever and won't disappear. Then there's title, which will show up very large across the middle of the screen, which is very impractical to read in my opinion. And the same goes for subtitle, it's just slightly smaller than title and a little bit lower, but it still fills up a big portion of the screen. And the second best option, I think, is action bar, which goes right above your hotbar. These aren't a necessity for using this plugin, but I have found them to be quite useful. Let me just give you an example and enable the action bar one. So now when I pay something, it's going to show up at the bottom and it disappeared because I got an error. Now I have to try that again. Now I've got to try to find a schematic that will work for me. All right, you'll see down there where it tells us what schematic was pasted. It went by really fast though, so let's try doing it in the chat instead. Now you can see in the chat how it pasted Pine Branch 13 from the set. Well, set doesn't matter so much, but you can see which asset was pasted, which is helpful. Oh, that's the one we just made. Yeah, that doesn't look bad at all. That's the branch we just made, and it seems to fit with the rest of these. All right, I'll continue to paste branches on here. And if you ever wonder how many branches to paste on here, it really just depends because every tree is different. And it's funny too, because when I look at trees in real life, I notice they're more imperfect than we think. There's usually a lot of bare spots in them that you wouldn't expect. We tend to think we have to fill in every available spot, but that's actually not how most trees are. So how many branches should you add? It's completely up to you and your own discretion, because every tree is different. Every tree is unique. I'm trying to find more vertical branches to fill out the top of the tree. Sometimes it does give me the same ones in a row which is not always what I want. The worst I could do is undo and repaste these in. This is looking a little bare. I'm just gonna try to fill it in with some longer branches. I flip through these until I get something that seems to fit. Like I keep saying, the more variety of these you have, the better. And it might be helpful to know the shape of the tree you're making before you even build the branches. That way you'll know which ones you need more of. If you have a tree that spreads out more at the crown, you might need some vertical branches that spread out more. Or in this case, if it's skinnier towards the top, you'll want to make sure those branches are shorter and smaller. Thinking ahead as much as you can on these things will help you once you get to this point where you're putting everything together. The goal is that you should have all of the options necessary up to this point, but if you do need to go back and make some extra schematics, that's always an option too. I think that gives you a general idea. The longest part is building all of the individual branches, but once you have those made, you can throw a tree together so quickly. And once you have some trees built, you can turn those into their own schematic brush and build a whole forest really quickly. Of course, these trees are ginormous. Most people are probably not going to need this scale of a tree. But the same rules apply to any size tree. No matter what size you are building, making use of the schematic brush will greatly improve your process. Especially when you want a good variety of trees, and especially, especially if they are mega trees. Concerning this spruce tree that I also made, I didn't show you how to build this in great detail, but the same rules do apply to this. When you get a close look at it, you can kind of see how I made it. I relied heavily on the loft tool to create all of the individual branches, but then used simple commands like replacing around a placeholder block to generate a mixture of air and leaves around them. And you'll notice the shape that these branches are making from the front overall, but I also took care to make sure it didn't end up being a flat shape. I made sure some of the twigs and branches would face more upward and some would go downward, much like fluffing a Christmas tree. And you'll notice how I have the branches getting thinner towards the tip of the branch and how I have the bare stick-like branches towards the back. These branches did take me a bit longer to build just because of the uniqueness of their shape and how difficult it is to make that look without all the pieces blending into each other, but I think I've achieved it fairly well. I also did these smaller branches that are all angled more upward because they were going to go towards the top of the tree and they also have a little more brown and other detailing blocks on them. The other special thing I did with these was I put this extra layer of glass and this dried kelp under all of the leaves and the whole purpose of that was just to add a shadowy layer under everything because I thought it would help separate the shapes of the branches so they didn't blend in with each other. So it might look a little tacky up close, but I think from a distance it looks all right. That's a brief rundown of how I did this tree. Of course, pasting it in all works the same, but designing each branch specifically for each tree is what can take a while. But once you have it, you're golden. 
I'm so happy I figured out this nice, efficient way of building mega trees. But I think now you are well equipped to go out and build your own tremendous mega trees. I'm gonna have to try remaking my birch tree at some point using this method. Although the original ones I made are still really good, I'm just curious to see if I could make a better one. If you do happen to build any mega trees after watching this video, I would love to see those creations somehow if you tagged me on it or whatever. I love observing how other people come up with their own solutions to things, and I would love to see the trees that you are able to make after watching this. It is a bit of work, it might take several hours to build all the branch assets, but it's definitely worth it if you plan on making a lot of trees and a whole forest of them. If you want to learn more about Schematic Brush, I didn't cover every detail about it, but I can link to a tutorial in the description that does go through everything in great detail if you are interested. But I do have tutorials for other things, like how to use World Edit and Archeon, if you want to learn more about those. I hope you are able to learn something from this video. Thanks for watching and have fun building!